Have you ever wondered what the world is made of? Well, a lot of people know that humans and everything we see around us are made of atoms, but what are those made of? Scientists have actually put a lot of thought into this and have come up with some weird conclusions. This is the world of subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are any particle smaller than an atom, and there are a lot of subatomic particles. The particles are divided up into two different categories, elementary and composite. Elementary particles are the particles that make up everything in the universe. These tiny particles are indivisible, meaning that they are not made up of any smaller particles. At least, scientists do not know what they are made up of. Composite particles are the larger subatomic particles. They are the particles made from the elementary particles. Scientists have come up with a theory that they call the standard model, and it encompasses three of the four forces of nature and all elementary particles, of which there are 25. This is a theory for pretty much everything in the universe, except for that one missing force, which is gravity. This is the equation for everything. Using this equation, you could calculate anything that doesn't involve gravity, which is the missing force in the standard model. The standard model is also represented as this the 25 elementary particles. These particles are also divided into two categories as well, the fermions and the bosons. These are the fermions. Fermions are the particles that make up all of matter, while the bosons are the force-carrying particles or the particles that intermediate the forces throughout the universe. This isn't the only difference between fermions and bosons, but other differences will be explained in other videos. The fermions can be divided up even farther into quarks and leptons. There are six types of quarks. The up quark, the down quark, the charm quark, the strange quark, the top quark, and the bottom quark. These are the particles that make up the composition of the composite particles. Take this piece of grass, for example. If you were to look at it through a microscope, you would see that it is made of cells, and the cells are made of atoms, and the atoms are made of protons and neutrons, and the protons and neutrons are made of three quarks. The quarks combine together in lots of different ways to make lots of different particles. There are six types of leptons. Electrons, muons, taus, electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and tau neutrinos. Leptons are any elementary particle that interacts with the weak force. The first lepton to be discovered, and perhaps the most well-known lepton, is the electron. This particle can be found orbiting the atomic nucleuses of our atoms. The latest leptons to be discovered are the neutrinos. Neutrinos are particles that interact with only two forces, gravity and the weak nuclear force. Neutrinos are nicknamed the ghost particles because it took scientists over 40 years to find them, since they interact so weakly with other particles. Neutrinos are formed through nuclear fusion, and the largest reactor around is the sun. Neutrinos are also very, very weak, so they go through objects like the Earth with no problem. They barely even slow down. Actually, while I'm standing here now, a hundred trillion neutrinos are going through my body every second. Isn't that crazy? The last types of particles in the standard model are the bosons. There are 12 bosons, the 8 gluons, the photons, the Z bosons, the W bosons, and the Higgs boson. Gluons are the force-carrying particles for the strong nuclear force. There are eight different types of gluons, and they all act like the glue of the subatomic world. Gluons connect particles together to make larger particles. In this example of a proton, there are gluons along all these blue lines. Gluons also help bigger particles come together to form even larger particles. Without these particles, there would be nothing in the universe but fundamental particles scattered everywhere, not able to come together. Photons are the force-carrying particles for the electromagnetic force. They are also the transmitters of light. Any object that emits light emits protons, from the most distant stars to the computer that you are watching this on. When the sun emits light, it emits photons, and these photons travel at the speed of light towards Earth. This is how we see the light from the sun. The sun emits neutrinos along with photons every second. The sun actually emits around 50 quintillion photons in a second. That's a five with 19 zeros behind it. 
The W and Z bosons are the force-carrying particles for the weak nuclear force. The W boson is responsible for nuclear fusion, while the Z boson is responsible for the transfer of energy when neutrinos elastically scatter. When two particles elastically scatter, they hit each other and bounce off of each other with the same amount of energy, so there is no energy lost in the collision. Here is an example. Imagine that these two balls are neutrinos. If these balls were actually neutrinos, they could bounce off of each other with an equal amount of speed when they hit. This is an elastic scatter. Since these balls are billiard balls, not neutrinos, they have to follow the rules of classical mechanics and cannot possibly elastically scatter since they lose energy in the collision. The last of the bosons is the Higgs boson, and the Higgs boson is responsible for giving particles their mass. How it does this and more about it will be explained in other videos. The Higgs boson is the latest discovery in particle physics and was discovered on July 4th, 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider. Without the Higgs boson, the standard model would not work because the Higgs is a necessary component in the equation. All of these H's I circled represent the Higgs particle. The missing force from the standard model is gravity and the hypothetical particle for gravity is the graviton. If scientists find the graviton, that would mean that the standard model was complete and it was a theory for everything in the universe. So, that's the standard model. The building blocks for all of matter, from the grain sand to the stars in the sky. It's kind of crazy to imagine that things so small can make up our entire universe. This was just an introduction into the world of subatomic particles, where classical mechanics does not even apply, and reality seems a lot more like sci-fi.